Today I'm going to teach you the number one mistake job applicants make f with me when they are applying to be a private investigator. Hi, Larry K. ShadowAnyone.com and the creator of the Investigator's Ultimate Guide series, premium private investigator training from someone who's been there and done that. Now let me just say, first of all, I've been on the other side of it where I wasn't a private investigator. I was trying to break into this field and I made tons of mistakes trying to get into this line of work and I ran into the same brick walls that, that everybody does initially where you're banging your head against the wall, you got no experience and you're trying to get that experience. Then I got my license and I got on the other side of it and it became much more clear to me why it's so difficult for people to get in without experience. Why would I want to bring somebody on board, train them, teach them all the secrets, make them a good investigator just to have them leave me and go work for someone else. So. Uh, having said that, let me say that I see this from both sides and uh, I have hired plenty of people to be investigators for me and uh, let me tell you the number one mistake they make. Now what I do in the hiring process is usually, frequently you'll get a phone call from the uh, potential applicant. This does not help your case or cause at all by the way. Um, if anything it saves you a stamp or you know sending an email because you're going to call, you're going to say, are you hiring, do you have any positions? It's not, you know, I'm going to say, do you have any experience? Because I'm always looking. Everybody kind of is always looking for a good investigator who's reliable, they can bring on board at the right price. Uh, so we're going to ask you if you got any experience. And then we're going to tell you, you can send a resume, we'll keep it on file and contact you if, if we have anything open up. Uh, but if you just straight up send a resume, uh, send something in the mail, however you prefer to do it. Uh, I'm going to look at that if the resume has anything that appeals to me. And by the way, you hear people say their resume does not get 30 seconds of attention. It doesn't. It, it doesn't get that much. I look at the resume, I go right down, what has this person done? Don't care who you've worked for, don't care about company names, government agencies, what have you done? Uh, if there's no experience there, it, it goes in the pile. Uh, if you do have experience and I'm interested, then the next phase is I will give you a call and I want to talk to you for a little bit on the phone. Uh, if I can talk to you on the phone, you seem like you have your act together uh, and it's, it seems like it might be a good fit, what I'll do is I will schedule a time to meet with you. Uh, and what I like to do personally is I like to take an applicant out uh, to lunch and of course it's on my dime if you're wondering about that I pay for it. Uh, hiring people and bringing people on board is kind of an expensive thing. It, it costs me about $500 to bring somebody on board because of the application process, the background checks, registering them with the state uh, under my license, those types of things and then just training them. I, you know, It takes hours and hours for me to be out with someone to make sure that they know what they're doing and to train them and bring them up to speed. So it's very expensive to bring someone on board and one of the first expenses I incur is buying them lunch. But this gives me a good 45 minutes or so to spend with them, to ask them questions and really for them to say something stupid, something that's going to disqualify them at this point. If we've gone through lunch uh, and I still like them, here's the secret that, that they don't know. At that point in my mind they are hired. I'm done. I've already decided I want to bring this person on board. The final thing that I do is I hand them an actual application and the releases for a background check. It's in an envelope addressed to me. It's stamped. It's ready to go. All they have to do is fill out the application, drop it in the mail, and return it to me. If they clear the background check, they're on board. Now I don't tell them that. I, I'll say something like, hey, you seem like you'd be a good fit. Let's see if this is going to work out. Here, fill out the application. Uh, if the background check, check comes back clear, we'll look at moving forward. And uh, I give them the application. And I'll tell you what, the biggest mistake people make, they don't fill out the application and return it. Now, what these people have no idea is they were hired. They, it was a done deal. The job was theirs. All they had to do was fill out the application and pass the background check. Uh, 
and they just don't take that one little final easy step. I don't care if you want to work at a hardware store or a fast food restaurant, you're, you're going to fill out an application. You know, here's the job that you want and you're not willing to do that last little step, filling it out, dropping it in the mail. Huge mistake, I see people make it uh, time and time again that, that want to come on board and work for me. And I want you to avoid that mistake. When you're going for something, move forward, take the action steps, don't stop halfway. If an employer or a potential employer asks you to do something, believe me, it's for a reason. It, it may very well be the test and it could be the go, no-go for you getting into the investigative world. I hope this is helpful to you. Please, if, if you're moving into this world, uh, if you find yourself having trouble, by the way, getting that resume with a little bit of experience on it just to get their attention because that, it all stops right there, do consider process serving as a way to get into this line of work. Uh, looking at an application, if that person's got process serving on there, that actually tells me a lot that they can interact with attorneys, that they can interact with people, some, many of whom are not happy to get the paper. Uh, maybe they have some skip tracing experience, maybe even some uh, surveillance experience. So if you're looking to get experience, consider process serving. Of course, I've got the Investigator's Ultimate Guide to Process Serving at ShadowAnyone.com. Be sure to check it out. This is Larry Kay, ShadowAnyone.com. Remember, do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing.